glad that y'all have uh, decided to join us this morning. Um, I, was, I was messaging uh, my family this weekend, um, actually yesterday, and it was kind of nice because uh, I, I had to send a message to them. I was like, you know, it's kind of nice getting to take a two-hour nap while you're gone. So I was able to take a nap. I said, uh, when y'all come back home, I think I'm going to move out so I can get some sleep because um, it's much, uh, much quieter just pipering myself at the house. So I'm just going to kind of go right into things here this morning. Um, so uh, Dad had talked to me, man, it's probably been a month and a half ago, um, asking me about speaking this morning. And naturally, growing up in a pastor's home, the last thing you want to do is exactly what I'm doing right now. You just know better. You just know what you're getting yourself into. And I had kind of promised myself growing up that it's something I'd never do because it's something I've never wanted to do. Um, it's something that I felt like I wasn't ready for. I told Dad, I was like, I don't think I'm ready for something like this. Not, not that I hadn't prepared and that I haven't, you know, really worked on, on what I feel like the Lord's laying on my heart, but that I just, I don't feel ready for this position kind of thing, and, um, and that I would never step behind a pulpit. It's much different on a Wednesday night, as, as Travis, you, or Mr. Tommy, you, you guys know, that it's much different on a Wednesday night, more of a class-based kind of thing. So I'm excited to be here. Um, it's obviously my home church, so it's kind of cool to speak to all of you. Um, so anyhow, Dad and I went out, and we went to grab lunch, and uh, we went to Five Guys at Mayfair. And it was really kind of cool. Um, is we got to have our dad and son time. We're really tight. And, um, and we're sitting there, and I'm enjoying my burger, and... You know, we're having good dad-son talk and all this kind of stuff, and he dropped a hot question on me. He's like, so have you thought any more about, you know, maybe speaking, you know, Memorial Day weekend? This is probably a month ago or so. And I'm sitting there cramming food in as fast as I can, just trying to avoid the question. Like, maybe if I just keep feeding the food in, then I won't have to answer this question. And then I'm like, hey, Dad, did you notice that the weather's pretty nice outside? And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but still, are you going to speak on that? Uh, so there's no way of avoiding the question. And, and my response to him was pretty simple. I just told him I was... I don't feel ready for this. You know, I want to do it because I feel like God's calling me to do it. And um, I had an experience back in 2015 where I knew that the Lord had called me into ministry. What, what way or what, you know, to what facet that was, or, you know, to capacity, I should say. I have no idea. Um, but I know that I just want to do what the Lord wants me to do. So I told him, I was like, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. I had no idea what I was going to talk about until it started to ring with me and through conversation with Dad. And just through prayer about the service and stuff like that, we started praying, you know, because mom and dad have been praying for me too, because they know I'm really struggling. Because I've been telling them, I'm like, I, I have all these dreams and hopes for my life. I really want to do this, that, and the other. Um, I, you know, I've, I'm, I'm a big time dreamer, so I've always wanted to see myself here. And I kind of now, looking back, am somewhat convicted because there's nothing greater than getting to do what I'm able to do right now, which is, you know, represent, represent God. So um, I started thinking what a privilege it is to be able to, to actually stand up before you guys, you know, my home church, my first time ever speaking uh, on a Sunday morning anyway, and just what a privilege it is uh, both in my home church and just as um, having the opportunity to speak about God because it's something that I'm really passionate about. I just promised myself I'd never do it from this standpoint, but, you know, we, uh, things come out of us unexpectedly. So. Anyhow, so I agreed to do it, and um, anyhow, so today I, I'd like to kind of talk about um, calling, is that um, will you answer the call, um, and that's kind of where we're going to go with things today. So um, how many of you have heard about uh, David and Goliath? Well, that's great. We're not going to talk about them today. I just want to see. <laughs> so um, <laughs> so um, actually, we're going to talk about Samuel today uh, from 1 Samuel, and, um, and just how he was... Uh, he was called, and he turned out being one of the greatest prophets of all time. Um, so uh, for those of you that don't know much about Samuel, uh, his mother was Hannah. Um, Hannah was um, not much of anything. She loved the Lord, but, and, that's, and that's great, but she was, held no position or anything like that. Um, give you a little bit of backstory. Hannah was, found, um, Hannah was found out in the streets by Eli. Um, where she was crying and she's just really having a difficult time um, because she wanted a son. She wanted to have a son so badly and uh, she, she could not have a son. And Eli, naturally, he goes out in the street, sees a, a woman outside and thinks, oh, okay, she's drunk, she, you know, she, she's lost her mind. And turns out she actually, you know, she was praying that the Lord would send her, give her a son, allow her to bear a son. 
And so um, she had a little bit of conversation with Eli, and he told her, you know, go in peace. You know, just trust that the Lord's going to, he's going to answer your prayer. And so um, the, uh, the Lord was able to take that situation and able to speak through, through Eli at the time, because Eli, for those of you that don't know, he was a priest in the temple, um, and he, uh, he, he was very in tune with God. And so um, once uh, Eli, excuse me, once Samuel was born, um, Eli basically raised him. So Eli was not Samuel's father, although he definitely had a father-like figure. It stood as a father-like figure to him. And, um, and Eli basically raised him. So he was in the temple. He stayed in the temple. He would open up the doors of the temple every morning, you know, to let, you know, the people in and everything. And, um, and so he, he grew up in the church. He was just a young boy that didn't know any better. You know, he just, he just had a calling on his life from a young age, and everyone that knew him knew that. Um, and so um, that's kind of the backstory behind it. I'm going to start reading uh, 1 Samuel chapter 3, if you have your Bible, if you'd like to turn. Um, so the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. Um, in those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. Uh, one night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and he laid down. Again the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. My son, Eli said. He's starting to get a little perturbed. He's like, you better settle down. I'm trying to sleep. So Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Um, The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. So he had that calling on his life at an early point, but he, he was not made aware of it yet. He didn't quite know yet. So a third time, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So at this point, if this were me and my father, I can tell you what he would have been doing. He would have pulled a rock and sock and move on me, and he probably would have been going to town telling me to go to sleep. You need to go to sleep. If you wake me up again, it's going to get ugly. Um, luckily, Eli was really patient. Um, my dad's patient too. Wait a minute. I mean, it might need to back, backtrack a little bit there. So, um, uh, but anyhow, so he, he was not aware of the call of the Lord yet at this point. But he was, Eli was beginning because of his years in, in the temple and his knowledge and his relationship with the Lord. He was aware of at this point what was going on. Um, and so um, we'll continue on. Um, so Eli told Samuel, go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there calling us um, at, as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. So if you want to kind of put a marker there, I'll go back to, to the rest of that in a, in a few minutes. Um, so that, to me, is a, is a pretty telling scripture right there. You know, his, his, his obedience to listen to the Lord calling him. And so he said, speak for your servant is listening. Um, that's really important when you look at the scripture and after reading through it. Um, I, read, I read a bunch in, in 1 Samuel, and, and I was trying to, you know, trying to craft it how I thought you know, it, it would make sense to everyone. And then I started reading, and for some reason, this particular scripture kept going back to me. And it was, why is it, you know, what is it with this? And I started thinking back to my conversation with Dad um, when we went to Five Guys and, and had lunch. Man, I'm really repping Five Guys. I need to get some kind of feedback on this one or something from them. <laughs> but um, anyhow, so um, it, we, just through that conversation with him, I started thinking back. And it's like, I, I was not in tune with what the Lord was trying to do, but through my father, which already knew that the Lord was, you know, trying to speak to me and deal with me, and he, and he has, um, that he was trying to call me to answer the call. So the whole point of today is, are you willing to answer the call? You know, I think at times, um, answering the call doesn't mean that you're necessarily called into ministry. Sometimes it's 
just being obedient to the Lord. So if he calls you to do something, that you just do it. And so um, I have a feeling that there's some in here today. I really pray that, that God would, would speak to hearts and that people that are sitting in here, you may be questioning if God's got something for you. God's got something for you. Yeah. And the thing is, I think you're, you're so, um, not everyone, but some people are, are so busy wrapped up in their own stuff, your own plans for your life, that you, you, you can't even see what God's got for you. Um, so here's your plans. If you will do this to it, and forget about it and just throw it away, that the Lord is going to be able to take you from here to all the way over here and be able to turn your life around. You know, God is able to do so much more than you can even conceive of. And He, um, he truly, if you will be obedient and you will simply do that, you'll put your plans and everything aside. The Lord is going to take you from here to here. But the problem is, and, and this is a little more modern, so hopefully you understand this, is we're so busy and caught up in our stuff that when the Lord does call us, or He is asking us to be obedient to Him, we don't recognize His number because we're not in tune with Him. We're not in touch with Him. But that when we get to the point where we can recognize His number, we'll quit hitting that deny button because He's calling and He's calling and He's calling. But we keep hitting deny, 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 deny because we don't know who it is. We don't recognize His voice. We don't recognize His number because we are not in tune with Him whatsoever. But when you get to the point to where you can say, Lord, <laughs> this is my life. Right here. This is who I really, because this is who all of us are, despite what you think. You think you're this great put together piece of puzzle, you know, here. like the, You're not. You're, you're just like this. You're a bunch of tiny little pieces that you're tattered and you're torn. And until you get to the point that you can recognize that you are broken, and that the only way that you're going to be full is through the love and and, and grace of Jesus, then you're, you're never going to be anything. But he can take all these pieces, and he talks about it in his word, takes all these little pieces here and puts something together that is really amazing, something that's great, that's powerful. Someone that is able to, this little boy at such a young age, he knew, God knew what he was going to do with him. He knew that he was going to take him and make him one of the greatest prophets that's ever been. That he will, you know, he would take him and he would be the one that appoints Saul and David as kings, some of the greatest kings that's ever lived. And, and this is a guy that, you know, a little boy. He was just a little boy in the temple. His mom, you know, it, it didn't, he had a relationship with his parents. But his mom, this is another thing that, no, I don't understand because I don't have a child, but I can say this too, is that she was willing to give her son at such a young age to give him and dedicate him to the Lord. That it wasn't, it was her son, but it wasn't really her son. She knew that he had a calling on his life and that the Lord wanted to use him. So the Lord chose to use that little boy to turn her life around, to do to her obedience. Had Hannah not been obedient, then Samuel would have never existed. So if you, if you can't see, it's a domino effect. If you're right now sitting in this room and you're not being obedient to the Lord, you're not listening to his word, to his call on your life, and, you, and again, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're called into ministry or this, that, and the other, but that... God is trying to use you. He's trying to speak to you. He wants you to be obedient. If you're not willing to sit there and be obedient, then you may be causing someone else to be out of the will of the Lord. Amen. And that's, that's hard for us to conceive sometimes. It's something that I've had to deal with. Is, you know, I'm, like I said, I have no desire to stand behind here. In my mind, that's, that's what I'm thinking a month ago. And I started thinking, wow, what a privilege it is. What, what would be the result if I didn't stand up here? And in some of the backstory that y'all may not know is a lot of things happened in between where uh, my family, my sisters and my mother were going to be out of town. And then all of a sudden they had already had a trip planned for my dad um, and the rest of his family out of town. And so it was all kind of orchestrated in, into a sense of, okay, this is what you're supposed to do. So if you don't get anything out of today, I'm certainly getting some out of today because the Lord is, is really dealing with me in a big way right now. It's, it's tough for me to deal with. Uh, it's tough for me to really take in because it's a lot to take in. Um, I'm sitting here, I walk in the doors this morning and automatically know, as I was talking to a few different people about it, all these responsibilities that I'm used to dealing with and I'm having to like give it up and set it aside and all this kind of stuff because I realize there's something way more important and that's that you guys hear the truth this morning. Right. And that's that, you know, if, if you do have that calling on your life, if God's speaking to you right now, he's telling you, hey, you need to move. You need to act on this. I'm asking you to do this, but again, you're so busy that you pull out the phone, you hit the deny button because you don't recognize him. 
Stop hitting the deny button. Stop hitting the deny button. The Lord's got so much for you. He's got so much for this church. He is moving in this church right now. We're excited for what he is doing and what he's going to do. Um, we, we fully believe that we, you know, we're, we're a spirit-filled church that we love being able to walk in on Sunday mornings and never know what's going to happen because of how awesome God is. He can walk in one day and change every single life in here. And, uh, and I believe that he's going to continue to do that. Um, I, I really, um, I really, I don't know how to put into better words than to, uh, than to put it into the, the whole phone analogy is, is that we're just so, we're so busy with our own mess that we can't even see what's right in front of us. And we, we think we got it all figured out and that, you know, we, we've got this whole life plan. I, trust me, I'm saying this speaking to myself. I thought I had my whole life figured out. You know, I had this, that, and the other that happened, you know, years back and all this. And, and realize now, standing here, I would not be standing here two years ago in my mind. I would not be doing half the mess that I'm doing right now if, if it were not for God because I, I had in mind something totally different for my life. I wanted to be somewhere else, as I'm sure many of you. You're probably looking back and, um, and wondering, you know, why, why am I here right now? But then again, that brings up a whole other problem is we're too busy living in the past. We're so stuck in our past that we can't even move to the future, wow. that, that we, we have this over here, you know, um, we've got this whole idea of, of what we, we think God created us for, yet we don't give God a chance to speak to us and tell us if that's what he really has for us. We're more concerned with what we think. I can tell you right now, until you put down what you think and your plans, and it becomes a pile of mess, he, he'll make beauty from ashes, but until you take that and you totally submit and totally give it to God and just totally forget that you had any plans whatsoever, you take it day by day, that you're not going to go anywhere past you are. So if you're struggling right now, you're having a difficult time moving on in your life, or you got some kind of event in your past that's holding you back, I'm here to tell you that you're going to stay right where you are in the pit that you're in until you are able to put it behind you and move on because you're a different person. You are a different person, you're a different man, you're a different woman, you're a different child. You're not the same person anymore. Amen. So during one of the most difficult times of my life a few years ago, I, um, my mother sent me this picture, and I can't, I can't think of anything better than this, this picture right here. You know, I see this here, <laughs> and here's what I had in mind right here. And the Lord is telling me, you know what? If you'll trust me, I've got something a lot better right around the corner waiting on you. So because of my mess and my, my failures and, and my human nature to think I know everything, especially as a, a teenager, early you know, adult, thinking that I'm smart and hot snot, I've learned that, trust me, I'm not. I don't think I know everything now. Um, that this is what I thought I had, and I thought it was amazing. I got my whole life figured out. But God has an abundance an open check that he could write for any amount, for anything that you could possibly imagine. In fact, you can't even imagine how great it is because what we have in mind for our life is nowhere near as great as what God has for us. That, that, that the greatest thing that you could ever imagine, that you, your human little feeble mind could think of, the Lord is so much stronger, more powerful than that, that he is able to take that and he is able to turn it into something beautiful, something that you can't even, can't even conceive of because it's not even human. Right. So perhaps God is calling you today and maybe he's speaking to your heart. Maybe he's got something for you that, you know, maybe he's been dealing with your heart. Maybe you're, you're in bondage. Maybe you're um, in chains. <laughs> maybe God is really just dealing with you and that he, he's called you into some form of ministry, or he's asking you to be obedient to him, to trust him. You know, I can't make this payment. Um, I can't, um, I, I don't know how to handle this situation. That, that's fine. That's fine. You don't have to know how to handle this situation. Um, because God, God does know how to handle that situation. So if there's anyone in here today that falls under any of that, uh, I would ask that you, that you listen to God right now, that you listen to the call that God's got on you right now, 
And again, that, that, that might be that he's simply saying, look, be obedient to me. Trust me. You know, listen to what I have to tell you that you'll answer. Stop hitting that deny button. You know, God's got so much for you and for this church and for your family. And, and he's got a future that you can't, again, you can't even conceive of it. But until you're able to put that down and let, let God just move in your life and to use you, you're never going to get past it. You're never going to get past it. If y'all would, if y'all would stand with me for a minute. If there's anyone in here today, if, you, if y'all would like to bow your heads. If there's anyone in here today that maybe God is calling you or he's maybe speaking to your heart or that he, you think he's got something for you, if you would, if you raise your hand, or maybe he's been dealing with you, you can put your hands down. Thank you. Maybe God's got something that you, you know, you know you, even if you don't think that it's something that you're supposed to do, or maybe you don't even know about it yet, maybe God's got something that he, he's got in store for you that he's just waiting for you to say yes, just to click the answer button. If you raise your hand, if you would, if you'd come to the altar, and I'll, I'll wait just a minute. God knows your heart, regardless if you're walking up here or not. Any others? You'll never leave me. If you listen to these lyrics, it's pretty good. God's here for you. God's got you. Those that would, um, if you come stand behind these three, I'd, I'd appreciate it. And I know they would too. Support is everything when you're making a hard decision. So for you three that came up, how about taking a look behind you for a second? These people believe in you. They know what you're capable of. Pastor Tommy, would you mind come praying? Thank you, Connor, for a beautiful message. Sincerity means everything. In fact, most people will receive the message that they know is sincere. And these that have responded to God's call this morning, it's like the little girl that was holding on to the little bear there in the picture. That's what your life truly can become when you give it to Jesus. Notice what he did in the picture. He changed the little bear into a great big bear that he was holding. Our Sunday school lesson this morning in Hebrews chapter 10 talks about hold on fast. Let's become tight gripped so that we will not let go. The message is simple this morning that Connor has brought that God is extending his hand. 
And you know, he did that on that cross. He extended both hands. And he was saying, I love you this much. Oh, what a wide, wide love God is. And so he wants to take your life and he wants to beautify it. He wants to increase it. He wants to develop it. He wants to help you grow in it so that the end of life is still holding you so that one day he will present you and us to his Father. Can you raise your hand right now and thank him for that? Can you just put your hands up and just worship thank him you, right Lord. there where you're standing and love on him and tell him how much thank you, you Lord. love him and you thank him and you appreciate what he's doing in your life right now. Thank you, Lord, for everything Father, that you do. Father, we love you. We thank God, you. I pray. We know, well, thank Lord, you. that your presence thank is you. here. Lord, thank you for everything you're going to do. We know, oh do. God, that you are taking our thank lives you, Lord. and you are growing our lives. You are developing our lives. Lord, I pray and for Stephen right now, Lord. You know that what, what he's going that through and the struggles that he's having, Lord. Earth. God, I pray that you, you will just move in his life and that you will just speak to his heart, Lord, and you'll help him to be obedient today you, as he stepped forward lord you know you what you know the things that you've got planned for him despite him uh, maybe not even being able to see that right now lord but that's that's the beauty in it all that it causes us to have to trust you fully and to fully rely on everything uh, that you have for us lord not on our own plans not on what we have lord but what you have planned for us god i pray that you will just move in his life that you'll encourage him that you'll strengthen him lord mentally that he'll be able to, to make the decisions to stand out, Lord, and, and to move forward, Lord Jesus. And thank Jesus, you for all that you do, Lord Jesus. Wonderful and holy name forever and forever. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you. Well, thank you all for being receptive to, to having to uh, put up with me today. Um, I, uh, again, I, I appreciate the support I've had uh, this morning. Uh, I had, uh, actually I had someone call me yesterday. I won't call his name because he got on to me for it earlier. But it, he called me yesterday and he said, do you still want us to come in at quarter till? You know, everyone comes and prays with, uh, with my dad um, in the mornings. And I said, let me tell you something. I said, I definitely want you to come pray with me <laughs> because I'm not ready for this. And if he needs it after doing it for almost 30 something years, I certainly need it, and so I appreciate that y'all been so accommodating to me, and I appreciate y'all being so supportive of our family, especially as they're out of town, Travis, for, for, for taking over the music, and everyone else has filled in the gaps. Thank you. Um, we're so excited about what's going on here at our church. We, we believe that God's doing some awesome things, um, that he has really got some big plans for us, and big plans for little ones as well. And uh, it was so encouraging and really awesome to see this past Tuesday night. Um, we, we do prayer meeting every Tuesday at 7 o'clock. And Lisa and Ronnie brought James with them. And uh, James, you want to tell everybody how old you are? Seven. Seven. <laughs> so James is seven years old. Again, you, you talk back about Sam, Samuel, um, like we were just talking about. James is, is seven years old, but God wants to do something even with someone as young as him. And this, yep, amen. And that, that his obedience and that his parents' obedience to bring in him and starting him off young is really important because it's what helps him get to where he's supposed to be. You know, it's, it's that whole thing that my parents have always used the analogy of, you know, shooting that arrow and hoping that it hits the target. Well, when, when you start him off young in church and teaching him that, to pray and how important it is, you don't have to worry about that arrow hitting the target because it's going to hit right where it's supposed to hit. So I would encourage you all this week to answer the call, really. I hope that you will take what I said as simple as it was, and I think I was a little bit shorter than Dad, so I got him beat. Um, but, uh, yeah, so we'll have a conversation about that one later, I'm sure. But yet you all really will, if you got something going on in your life, that you'll take it and you'll stop, you know, stop hitting that deny button, that you'll answer it and be willing to, to move with God. So thank y'all. Um, Tuesday night prayer meeting, 7 p.m. Uh, we're really excited about it. It's going really well. If you want to feel, you know, the presence of God, come in on Tuesday night because they are powerful. It's really powerful and to see what God's doing. 
uh, and then Wednesday night at 7 p.m. as well. Thank you all. Hope you have a wonderful week, and uh, we'll see you Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. Thank you all.